how do I use servos? Servo is a small actuator teams can put on their robot to move small actuations such as claws or rollers. Servos are pretty cool because they're smaller than normal motors and they have a bit of built-in smarts that make them opportune for certain applications. Some situations, like a claw, require a servo to go to a position and stay there. Servos are great for this because you send them a signal and then internally they can determine where they need to go and then also hold that position. Our servos expect a range of 500 to 2500 microseconds, which matches the FTC control system perfectly. In other systems like hobby systems, those sometimes use a smaller range than what our typical servo range is. And in those cases, you'll want to use a servo signal range extender. A servo range extender is an all-in-one unit that plugs in in line with your servo and extends the output of whatever hobbyist system to reach the full range that the servo is expecting. This is an Animark programmable servo. It comes in a couple of different forms, including high speed, high torque, one turn, and five turns. Some interesting features on our servos are the integrated mounting flanges with a number 10 hole pattern, the steel hex output shaft, as well as steel internal gears. When selecting a servo, teams will want to consider whether they want speed or torque. Additionally, teams might want to consider whether they want one rotation or five rotations. The difference between a speed servo and a torque servo is the gear ratio inside the servo. Because of this, servos that are designed for speed can't be converted to torque nor vice versa. Speed servos are pretty interesting because they have a high rotational speed and that allows them to be great for low load applications such as rollers, indexers, feeders, and other low load applications. Our torque servos are interesting because they have a higher torque output, making them great for more medium level applications such as claws, grippers, or linkages. So the difference between our one turn and five turn servos are purely in the amount of rotations it can rotate in angular mode. So one turn servos are great for applications in which you need less than one full rotation of the servo, such as a claw, a linkage, or other things that have a limited movement range. Our five turn servos are interesting because they can give you more rotations, allowing you to pair them with a gear reduction or pulley reduction to get either more torque or more speed out of the servo and still keep a large range of motion. The Animark programmable servos come default in angular mode, but can be programmed for continuous rotation mode as well. In angular mode, the servo will receive a signal from your control system and internally determine the direction and speed it needs to go to reach its target. At that point in time, it will attempt to hold its position based on the number you've sent it. One neat feature on our servos is the addition of a fourth wire. What this fourth wire does is it lets us see the internal sensor on the servo so we can get that feedback and determine exactly where the servo actually is versus where we've told it to go. This can be useful in cases in which you've told the servo to go somewhere and there's physically something limiting it from getting there. Alternatively, you may find you want your servo to spin infinitely in one direction or the other. In this case, you'll want to set the servo for continuous rotation mode in which it'll take a signal and spin at a specific speed in either the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. To program your programmable servo, simply plug it in to your servo programmer of choice. You'll want to apply power. And then there's usually a menu that will say program servo and tell it what type of servo we want to program. So in this case, we'll want to make this a continuous rotation servo. So once we select the mode, we can test to make sure our settings have taken effect. Now what this will do is it'll tell the servo inside to be in a specific mode and you won't need to reprogram it unless you want to switch modes again. So we have a couple of accessories that can pair with your servo to add additional functionality. So with the base servo, it comes with a normal 5mm hex output shaft. On top of this, you can use a shaft adapter similar to this one for 3 8 hex or our hub adapter which has both a 1032 hole pattern and an M4 hole pattern for attaching various different types of components. So on this Robits robot, we're using servos in a few locations to give our robot some added functionality. One of these locations is the claw. So here we can see one of our torque servos 
driving a gear, and then this gear drives these other two gears to allow the claw to open and close. This is a great application for our torque servo because we want to make sure we get a firm hold of our game piece, and a claw does not generally require it to move very fast. In this particular instance, the servo is in angular mode, so we can set a position and the claw can open to a specific location and close to a specific location. Another application in which we're using a servo is this extension mechanism. So here we're using a gear and another gear to rotate this four bar. This is another great application of a torque servo to make sure we have enough oomph to get this extension where it needs to go. Overall, servos are pretty neat giving you small, lightweight actuation on your robot, whether that's a continuous rotation mode or an angular mode. And that's how you use a servo.